this video, we're going to show you how to make your own security camera to keep an eye on your home, valuables, or whatever else. The camera features facial and body detection and can send you an email notification whenever it detects someone in its field of view. The camera is small enough that you can pretty much place it anywhere. You also have the option of streaming live video from the camera through a webcam server. All the materials other than the two pieces of electronics can be found at your local hardware store. Hey guys, Davis here. We're going to be using a Raspberry Pi Zero W and a Raspberry Pi camera for this project. In the next part, we're going to be showing you everything you need to know to build this project, including all the steps, the materials, and how to load the code. So let's get started. Here are all the materials that you're going to need for this project. You can find a list of these materials on our project page or in the description down below. And you're also going to need some of this quarter inch MDF board and a paper template. The quarter inch MDF board isn't really a quarter inches thick, but for whatever reason, that's what it's called. So this is going to be the housing of our camera. It's gonna be made out of pieces of MDF glued together and there's gonna be a bottom part and a top part. The bottom part is the main piece and it holds the camera at the front face and the Raspberry Pi in the middle. And uh, it has some nuts glued onto the sides so that the top piece can slide over the bottom piece and be attached using a few screws. There's also gonna be a hole right here for a power cable and then the top, there will be an additional hole to mount that to a metal bracket which will be mounted to a ceiling or the wall. First, I started out drawing out the templates that are going to help me cut out the pieces from the MDF board. The very bottom piece was 4 inches long by 2 inches wide. I then used my precision ruler to connect all the dots together. At the front face of the housing, we wanted to have just enough room to fit the camera comfortably. This turned out to be 2 inches wide by 1.8 inches high. The sides of the bottom portion of our housing only needed to be high enough to accommodate some nuts for the top portion of the housing to screw into. We made these 4 inches long by 3 quarters of an inch high. We won't go over all the dimensions in this video, but you can find all of the dimensions in our project page. So it's always good to label your parts. I just labeled all the pieces on our template and so now I can cut this out and start cutting the MDF. Although it's not completely necessary for me to use these paper templates, they do allow me to arrange them on the MDF board however I would like, and it also allows me to make multiple copies if I want to make more than one. Trace out the paper templates onto the MDF board using a pen however you would like, and then find an adult and have them cut out the pieces using an electric jigsaw. We found that all the dust generated by the saw made it really hard to follow the lines, so it's helpful to have someone else vacuum up the dust as you cut. The dust is also really not good for you either, so wearing a breathing mask and safety glasses is highly recommended. Next, we carefully glued them together using some wood glue and used some clamps to hold them together while they dried. We also made sure to use a paper towel and wiped off all the excess glue around the edges. Next, we were ready to drill all the holes to mount the camera. We have to drill five fairly small holes at the right distances from each other, so it's important to line these holes up correctly. Using a small pilot drill to locate your holes precisely and guide your larger drill bits to the correct location really helps to get it right. In our case, our 2.5mm screws were not long enough, so we had to drill some counterbores into the surface to allow the head of our screws to fit in. Because this was a little difficult to do, you can avoid this problem by finding slightly longer screws. These holes were 21.7mm wide and 13.3mm tall. We used a 764 drill bit to drill all the way through. These four holes make our camera mount holes. We now need one more hole in between two of these holes for the camera lens to go through. We measured the exact center of the top two holes and made a pilot hole there with a small drill bit. Because the lens is raised off the circuit board slightly, it doesn't sit flush with the housing and we had to carefully use a half inch drill bit to drill a small counter board for the lens to rest in. It's very easy to go straight through the MDF board, so be sure to take it slow. Once that's done, take a 5 16 drill bit and drill straight through. Line your electronics up inside the housing and mark off where the power cable is going to plug into. You'll want to make the hole for the power cable as close to the bottom of the housing as possible because that's where the Raspberry Pi will sit. Mark the corresponding location on the outer housing and then put the two pieces together. 
We can drill straight through both pieces to make sure that the holes align. But to make sure that we go through this right with the big half inch drill, drill a pilot hole in there first to guide the drill bit into the right position. This hole has to be at least half an inch wide for the USB cable to go through. We lined the metal bracket up towards the back of the housing and made sure that there was enough room for it to pivot. And then we drilled it with an 11 64ths drill bit. On the lower portion of the housing, we drilled two corresponding holes with the 5 16ths drill bit. That was all the cutting we needed to do on the MDF board, so after that, we gave it a few good layers of black spray paint. After letting the paint dry, we were finally ready to start putting the pieces together. We started by putting a 3 quarter inch long number 8 screw through the pivot hole and held it in place with a nut. We then sandwiched a metal bracket between this nut and a wing nut to make it easily adjustable. On the bottom portion of the housing, we mounted the camera with the ribbon cable facing upwards with four 2.5mm screws. Next, we installed two nuts into the two holes on the bottom portion of our housing. We placed some Gorilla Glue on a piece of paper and spread the glue around the inside edges of these holes. We then carefully slid the nuts inside these holes and let the glue dry. While that was drying, we plugged the ribbon cable into the connector of the Raspberry Pi and put it inside the housing. Once the glue was done drying, we put the two pieces of the housing together and closed it with two 20mm long M4 screws. If you line the hole up right, the power cable should plug right into the Raspberry Pi. The first thing you'll need to do to run the code on your Raspberry Pi is open up the terminal. We'll need to configure the Raspberry Pi camera, so type sudo config. Scroll down to interface options and press enter. Click on camera and then enable the camera. After enabling the camera, you can exit the menu. You can check that the camera works by typing the command raspy still o and then an image name for the output. If you open up the file explorer, you can click on the image and view the image that the Raspberry Pi camera took. Next, you're going to need to install OpenCV on your Raspberry Pi. It's kind of a long process, uh, but if you want to know how I did it, check out our motion tracking airsoft turret. I'll link that in the description. The OpenCV guide will prompt you to install a virtual environment for your Python dependencies. Make sure you're running this virtual environment by typing source tilde slash dot profile and then the command work on CV. Be sure to download the files for this project by visiting our GitHub page and downloading a zip file or cloning the repository. The code looks a little something like this. In the project directory, you'll have a readme.txt file, which has the dependencies for this project. There are also a couple Python files, a uh, templates folder, and a models folder. The main.py file runs a Python Flask server. There are a few things that you can modify at the top of the file, which are different variables that we use. There's also a mail.py file, which is uh, used to send an email when the Raspberry Pi detects an object. At the top, there's a from email and from email password, and a to email variable. You'll need to replace these with your own emails uh, in order to send an email. It basically connects to a Gmail SMTP server, and uh, logs in and sends the email. So you'll have to make sure that the email that you're sending this from is a Gmail email. Camera.py interfaces with the Pi camera. There are a couple functions in here. Uh, one is get frame, which just uh, connects to a video stream and gets a frame from the Raspberry Pi camera. There's also the get object function, which uses an image classifier to find an object in the image and then draw a frame around that object and return the modified image. There are three different image classifiers in the models folder. You can use any one of these by modifying the variable in the main.py file. The program works by launching a new thread which uh, detects objects in the background and then sends an email if an object is detected. There's also a route for the webcam feed. When you connect to the webcam feed, it will continuously request frames from the camera and then send them to the client. 
Once downloaded, make sure to enter the directory and then run the command pip install r requirements.txt. This will install all the dependencies needed for this project. To run the project, type python main.py. This will start a server on your Raspberry Pi. If you're on the same network as your Raspberry Pi, type the IP address of the Raspberry Pi in a browser and append a colon and 5000. This will open up a web page with the webcam from the Raspberry Pi camera. If the Raspberry Pi detects an object, it will send an email to the email you configured in your mail.py file. If it's the first time you sent an email from the Raspberry Pi, you'll probably get something like this from Google on the sending email. To fix it, all you have to do is click the Allowing Access to Less Secure Apps link, and then toggle the Allow Less Secure Apps on feature. You'll get an email from the Raspberry Pi with the subject line security update. If you open up the email, it will show you a picture of the object that the Raspberry Pi detected, and then you can visit the webcam server if you want to see more video. We experimented with the webcam by putting it in a few different places. It's easy to put on a shelf in your living room. But you could also put it on the outside of your house. To mount it on the outside of our house, we used some 3M outdoor mounting tape and stuck it on the metal bracket. It's strong enough that you can support the security cam if you mount it on top. And then we adjusted the wing nut in order to tilt the camera down so that it had a proper viewing angle of the subject. All right, so that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're gonna be linking our hackster.io page in our description, which is gonna include written instructions, links to our Python code, and some schematics to help you build your own security camera. Also, if you wanna see some of our behind the scenes photos, uh, check out our Instagram account, which is also linked in the description. If you guys end up building one of your own security cameras, be sure to tag us too, because we'd love to check it out. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all our other videos, but until then, see you next time.